DeAndre Lambert Smith's emergence has been a huge bright spot uh, for this Auburn offense. In the world full of podcasts, he's the undisputed heavyweight champion of hot takes, an Auburn sports homer, master of the bug, and message board legend. Get your buttons buttoned and your hats flattened because the Top Button Podcast is about to kick off. And you don't want to miss your courtside seat. Now, here's your host, Charlie Five. What's up? We're back. It's another episode of the Top Button Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Rush, a.k.a. Charlie Five. Happy Friday. It's one day before Auburn takes on the Georgia Bulldogs, the hated rivalry, uh, as we travel to Athens in a what's going to be a tall task. 24 point underdogs. But uh, one thing I want to talk about before we go, before we head that way, I want to talk about a big bright spot of this season so far. And that's been the addition of Keandre Lambert Smith. And we're going to break it down a bunch of different ways. But before we get started, we got to give a shout out to mybookie.ag. Use coupon code next round for a double up deposit bonus. Give them $250. They're going to give you another $250 back on top of that. Uh, to play with, to play with absolutely free. So you can hit all the different sports betting lines. You can parlay it up. You can teaser it up. Do whatever you, uh, ever your little heart desires. Uh, it's it, they got betting lines for everything. So uh, get in there, get in the mix, check it out. Mybookie.ag. So I'm going to be honest. Uh, you know the the season obviously not going as gr- as great as you would imagine, but if you're looking for bright spots to point to. Keandre Lambert Smith, you hate to see, you definitely don't want the, the what he's doing so far this season to be overlooked or overshadowed by losses or, or things of that nature because he is uh, he's been a revelation. I'm just I'm not I'm not even gonna sugarcoat it. Uh, he's been an, an unreal addition to this team. Uh, and there's so many different things that are gonna benefit Auburn in the long haul, I believe, if he can keep up this pace. And, and keep going. I mean, he kind of came in um, sort of an unsung hero uh, from Penn State, uh, not appreciated. They pooped on him as he left, which a little bit I understand, a little bit of hurt feelings. A uh, lot of uh, – you saw a lot of podcasts where one guy came on Locked on Auburn. A lot of people just didn't look at him as, hey, he's he's a he's an okay number two guy. And if you look at his numbers, Penn State – Kind of like Auburn at, at times, where you, you're just not don't have very prolific passing attacks, and he's got number two receiver numbers. I mean, 400 yards a year, 500 yards a year, 600 yards a year. Like it's that's kind of been uh, that's been his career so far, and he's come to Auburn and just completely torn it up uh, from the day that he got here. There was some talk about maybe he was a little bit of a he could be a toxic personality. He's been quite the opposite. Uh, he's come in. He's been a leader. He's really working with these younger guys, and they're looking up to him. And he's producing. He's producing every single game. Uh, it doesn't matter the opponent. I know a lot of people were like, uh, a lot of people say, "Oh, well, he's he's beating up on the small opponents. He's beating up on the you know the weaker guys." Well, hey, the only game he doesn't have a touchdown this year is against New Mexico. <laughs> he's had multiple touchdowns twice. Uh, and he scored on everybody. Had a big touchdown on uh, Oklahoma. If you just look at some of his season totals uh, back whenever he was at Penn State, again, he had a 673-yard year. He had a 389-yard year. He had a 521-yard year. Uh, and all of those years, he either had three, uh, four touchdowns or less uh, in those years. Well, so far through five games at Auburn, He's got 415 yards and six touchdowns. So he's he's already got more touchdowns in a single season uh, at Auburn than he did at any point in time in his career uh, at Penn State. And, you know, you look at those numbers, 11 total touchdowns total at Penn State. He's over halfway there uh, at Auburn through five, uh, through five games. So he's still got seven more games left, hopefully eight, uh, if you look at a bowl, if you look if he does play in a bowl game, get to play in a bowl game, that he could really uh, blow those numbers at, at Penn State completely uh, out of the water. Uh, and it's just he's continued to produce and produce 
Uh, and I think it's 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 massive for Auburn on on multiple uh, different levels because you know and we'll talk about the impact it could have on portal receiving. We'll talk about the impact it could have on uh, record books. I mean, if we're if we're really talking about uh, you know impact, we'll we'll dive into the record books here uh, in just a second. But you you go into you know you Auburn's had a lot of. I don't want to say turmoil off off the off the field uh, on the off staff off field staff. There's been a lot of turmoil or not really a lot of uh, structure, I guess, up until this past January or February when Will Redmond was hired, uh, and then he assembles his staff around him, uh, and and they really get that scouting deal going. The you know really being able to work the portal uh, in an efficient manner, and you go into spring and you identify this kid is somebody uh, that's going to be a, that could be an impact player your first real time when you're set up to, to attack the portal. And then you pick a guy that's going to end up being your more than likely your leading receiver this year, barring injury. Uh, it's just uh, so many different things that you could point to that are, that are going to be uh, that could make long lasting impacts uh, at Auburn. So I think uh, we definitely don't want to let the season results overshadow the impact of that Keandre Lambert Smith has had, so far, and is probably going to continue to have. He's got a huge test this weekend. Uh, he's got a huge test. You did see uh, Georgia be vulnerable uh, against the passing attack again, uh, you know, in the Alabama game. So can he feast a little bit? And, and this is another really good uh, chance for him to put good film on tape for his prospects in, uh, in the NFL. He's way faster than I expected. Uh, you saw it on – that uh, long touchdown against Arkansas, he has the ability to 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 go the distance, uh, and he can run away from you. That was not something that I expected. His route running is is exactly what I expected. He's able to do all the technical things to to excel at the next level. His hands are are basically next level. I mean, he does have a couple of drops, but they're all uh, it's it's all like. Uh, I don't even think he'd be credited for a drop. It's all like diving catches or in traffic. But some, the touchdown he caught against uh, the touchdown he caught against Oklahoma, you know, great, unbelievable play. Uh, just he had a one-handed catch against, um, I guess Arkansas. Maybe he had a one-handed catch against Arkansas. Yeah, late in the second half, uh, he just uh, does a lot of the little things right that you expect from a from a senior. And for the younger guys, Auburn has a ton of younger, talented guys. For them to be able to see that and see that guy doing all the little things correctly, uh, it just it's it's huge. It's it, you can't put a value on it. So I just definitely don't want the season to overshadow the impact that Keandre Lambert Smith may have on this. Honestly, the future of this wide receiver room, uh, the future of this wide receiver, uh, you know this freshman class that we had coming in that, that we had coming in that we had come in this past year like all of the things that he's done this year uh i just don't i definitely don't want those uh to be overlooked so i said record uh possible impact on the record books we're gonna dive into it uh in just a second but before we do that we got to give a shout out to our boy ford stokes with active wealth management what are you doing if you haven't double checked triple checked Make sure that what you're doing and from a retirement standpoint, from a saving standpoint, is going to get you where you need to be. Make sure you're not paying senseless fees. Make sure that you're completely protected in any possible way that you can be from the IRS. And just make sure, hey, maybe I'm not taking advantage of products that I need to take advantage of. And Ford Stokes has access to some that most financial advisors do not. So check him out. Ford Stokes, go to retirementresults.com forward slash plan. Uh, give him a shout. Tell him where you go. Tell him I sent you uh, and make a friend at the same time. So Ford Stokes retirement results presented by Active Wealth. Auburn's record book for receivers is uh, I want to be careful <laughs> how I say this because I don't want it to come off like I'm unappreciative of a lot of the receivers uh, that have played here. But it's just it's just reality that Auburn's record book is not incredibly impressive just from a statistical standpoint uh, at receiver. But there are some great receivers that have come through Auburn. Auburn's just not ever really known for having a prolific 
passing attack. Like you just don't have a ton of 3,000 yard passing, uh, 3,000 uh, yards of, of passing, 1,000 uh, yards of receiving. You don't have uh, a ton of that. Uh, but the ones that you do have are, are, you know, are really good seasons. Like your single season, uh, your single season receiving yards, Ronnie Daniels, he was here one year, is 1,068 yards back in 1999. And then Terry Beasley, uh, 1,051 yards in 1970, and that one's really impressive because I don't think they played the full 12-game uh, schedule at that point in time. So he did that in a in an era where uh, running the ball was a big deal, uh, not really throwing it around. So obviously those are your top two receiving yard for, uh, total yards in a season, and Keandre Lambert-Smith is on pace to really shatter those. Uh, I think if he were to continue – you know, if he were to continue what he's doing, uh, he'll be well over those numbers. Uh, 415 yards in five games. Uh, if he plays a full 13 games, you're talking right at almost uh, 1,100 total yards. So that would be uh, – he he's, has a really good chance to uh, be your single-season receiving yards uh, guy. Uh, touchdowns. Touchdowns, I mean, in a single season. Uh, Terry Beasley has – Pretty much dominant. He dominated the record books with 12 in 1971 and 11 uh, in 1970. Keandre Lambert Smith has six through five games. Um, so 12 is definitely uh, in, in reach. I mean, if he just gets one more, uh, one more reception per game, that's 13 uh, that through the regular season. And then not depending on, you know, if he plays in a bowl game or not, if Auburn gets to a bowl game or not. So, uh, I think that would even be more impressive if he's able to do it. If Auburn misses a bowl game, if he's able to get to those numbers, and Auburn misses a game, uh, doesn't make a bowl, uh, that would be you know even more impressive. So it's the being able to come in in one season and pick up the offense. And there's been some hiccups, like there's been some times where he's running incorrect route, or there's been some times where there's been some confusion. Uh, it's hard to come in in spring uh, and learn a offense as as um, I don't want to say complicated. I think as robust as uh, this one and the freedom that the wide receivers have to be able to uh, diagnose the coverage and, and run uh, a lot of choice type routes along with the quarterback. I think it's a it's a very you got to be on the same page and for them to be able to create that chemistry early on. Uh, I think that's what's helped yield these big results, um, these big results that he's had. I mean, he's been able to light it up. I mean, 150 yards against, uh, I believe, Arkansas, which is, you know, he did have a 67-yard touchdown in that uh, 156 yards. That's only – 156 yards is only a couple of yards away from getting into the top 10 single-game uh, <laughs> record book. So, he's got so he's got an opportunity to do a lot of historic things from an Auburn perspective. Uh, and I'm, I just I, I want to continue to to pound on that and harp on that because he is uh, he's been he's been a, a one of the few bright spots in this season so far. So big shout out to him and hopefully he can continue this pace and hey break those records. And I'd love to see him have a big game, obviously this weekend to kind of continue to cement that. You, if you do it against Georgia and it just really starts turning heads as far as uh, the scouts go. The biggest impact that Keandre Lambert Smith is going to make, let's just be let's be honest. Last year's uh, portal wide receiver haul was a huge disappointment. Uh, a absolute, uh, I mean, I, I don't have any. Uh, it was a disaster. Uh, you now, granted, you came in, you came in in December. You, you know, you come in late in the game, and you're trying to assemble a roster and you're trying to get everything together and, and hire a staff and, and it's tough. I don't, I don't, it is, it's a little bit tricky to do all that in the time frame uh, that you have, but you come in and you bring in multiple uh, you bring in a lot of um, you bring in a lot of portal guys. I mean, multiple portal guys, way more than just one uh, wide receiver and you don't hit on any of them. I mean, it was a, it just wasn't good. It wasn't good from a receiving standpoint. I mean, your best portal guy that you brought in uh, was Caleb Burton, who had 226 yards. Uh, and Caleb Burton really 
didn't even start playing until uh, I guess the Arkansas game, I think was his big, bigger breakout game. You know, he had a couple of big plays there, but you had Shane Hooks, uh, you had um you had Jair Shorter, uh, just didn't really didn't really get what you wanted to get out of the portal uh, from a wide receiver standpoint, whether that be missed the evals, whether that be the the not having the the staff in place to be able to really attack the portal in a in a in an efficient way. Regardless, last year was bad. Last year was bad from from that standpoint. So you you're worried about do we start having a stigma of not being a good location for portal wide receivers? And you need to have some holdover. You need to have some guys that you can bring in to help get this younger class up to speed. Uh, well, if if Keandre, if, if KLS continues on this pace, you sort of silence a lot of those. You sort of silence a lot of those fears. You sort of silence a lot of the negative recruiting and you become, you, you make it to where you can put, uh, I guess, uh, what's it called? Proof of concept on paper to show, hey, look, Auburn is a place where a transfer wide receiver can come in and put up big numbers. Uh, and that's something that you don't necessarily, you don't want to always lean on, obviously, the portal because you're bringing in these elite receivers uh, from the high school ranks. But you could, if you have an injury, if you have a guy go in the portal and you need to plug and play, you need to be, you need to have something that you can point to to say, look, this system that we're running right now, if you come in in one year, look what this guy did and you're a very similar player, you could put up those same exact numbers. And we could take you from where you've been, you know, the the middle of the road type numbers at Penn State, and we put him into a, hey, now we're talking about a uh, leader in the conference, uh, one of the leaders in the conference as far as receiving goes. Now, I, I think that is uh, that could make a huge, huge impact on – not only just receivers in in general, but really any offensive player you can set you can point to success that hey look we can bring in guys now, and and, and they can excel, and and you really erase the taste in the mouth that you left based off of the twenty twenty three season and, and and transfer portal wide receivers um, in general. So there there's again. I think we need to continue to root for this kid. Uh, he's he's been mega pro Auburn. He's been a huge asset to this team, a huge leader uh, to this team. One of those guys that doesn't like losing. He came from a program. Hey, Penn State, you can't really you can't really dump on them that they've they've won. They, they haven't really won a ton at a hot like a high level as far as championships go, but they've put a lot of wins on the board. And he came from that. And you know, coming to Auburn, who is sort of in a little bit of a wilderness uh, scenario where you've had you know multiple seasons now where you you know you only win six games or, or less. Uh, it's it's tough, and, and that's that's a culture of you know com, you know culture of complacency, a culture of this sort of become I don't want to say become okay with it, but you it's something that you got to shake. It's something that you got to break, and and for him to come in. Uh, and be a, a leader like he's been and continue to to go off every single week, uh, I think it's going to yield a lot, a huge dividends moving forward. Now, uh, we're about to hit the meat of the schedule. You're about to find out if he is, you know, he's about to be tested as, as, as much as he possibly can. Uh, you got basically three or four road games, three road games in a row. You don't play inside Jordan Hare for a month. Uh, you do have a bye week. You do have a bye week after Georgia to sort of mend, heal up, and and, and figure out what you need to do to uh, take it to the next level. Uh, but uh, yeah, he's got some big tests coming up, and he's got a chance to really continue to push to put good, good film on good, good, good video on film for for NFL, but a really good highlight film in general. So let's keep rooting for him and keep pulling for him because I think he's uh, he's earned it. He's earned it. He's uh, he's he's an Auburn guy. Like right off the bat, he he's he's gelled. He's become an Auburn guy, and we we need to you know support him as one of the few bright spots. Um, one of the few bright spots that's not just one of these outrageous freshmen that are coming in and excelling early. So uh, let's continue to pull for him, continue to cheer for him, and let's see what he can do against Georgia tomorrow. Um, 
I'll do a full breakdown on what I expect, what to look for on your on our Know the Enemy pod in the morning. Uh, but other than that, you know, we'll be we'll be after, on after the game. Uh, we'll go live Sunday night. Uh, we'll 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 have multiple shows over the weekend, obviously, like we always do. Uh, and I, again, really appreciate you guys. Uh, sign up for the barn, thebarnauburn.com. One dollar for the first month. Get all the information that you can ever imagine. It's crazy. We had a uh, when when the Deuce Night stuff started coming up, we had a pay a thread go twenty plus pages over five. Um, right now, it's it's close to five hundred <laughs> replies, uh, and we constantly updated it to kind of keep have like a play by play of what was going on leading up to. Uh, his commitment on uh, on Wednesday. So that kind of stuff is just ton of fun. Very active board, a lot of a uh, lot of great personalities, and I think you'd really enjoy jumping in and enjoy and, and joining the conversation. So check it out. It's only one dollar for your first month. Uh, if you're if you don't if you hate it, you're only out a buck. Great investment. If you love it, then hey, you made a great investment. So if you like this video, like it. If you like this channel, subscribe to it. Uh, follow me on Twitter, the underscore Charlie underscore five. And you know, we're going to be back every single day. This is another episode of the Top Button Podcast. Stay buttoned. Thanks for listening and drive home safely.